Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We're going to an unboxing today of the brand new, spanking and shiny Hungarian Rhapsody, the new operational combat series game from the gamers. Uh, series designer on this would be Dean Essig. The game designer is Stefan Aquaviva, sounds like, and game developer Curtis Bear. Um, this is the new OCS title, of course, but I think it's also the first one to be developed since the change of chain of command for OCS. Um, Curtis is now the series honcho. John Kisner previously filled that role and was responsible for Smolensk and the last several OCS titles, uh, all of which I was pretty happy with. So let's see what we get here. Uh, first of all, I'll mention um, this guy is in a full two-inch box, which I'm happy to see. Um, the MMP has been historically kind of goofy about that in that they've often put these relatively large OCS games in inch and a half boxes where you have absolutely no hope of getting them all in the box. So here we have the component sheet. We have a box and a lid, two 22 by 34 map sheets, one Budapest area map, six counter sheets, including two identical OCS 4.2 marker sheets, one OCS 4.3 series rulebook, one Hungarian Rhapsody specific rulebook, two OCS 4.3 charts and tables, a Hungarian Rhapsody scenario book, two tables in order of arrival booklets, six player aid cards, two core marker displays, and two six-sided dice. Now, I will mention that um, some, it seems, of the OCS 4.3 rules that have been shipped out with this are misprinted. Um, there's a couple of pages transposed. You can download the current rules. If I happen to have um, that bad copy, I don't care too much. Uh, but if you do get a bad set and you don't have an extra copy of the OCS rules um, and you don't want to print them yourself, then uh, contact Multiman and they have promised to fix that. Um, so we got a pile of stuff here. There's quite a bit in here, including some things that we don't see very often uh, for the series and even for Multiman in general, like these displays. So let's try and go about this in an organized way. And we've got this, uh, of course, we've got the traditional MMP blank sheet of, sheet of paper for reasons unknown. Uh, this is going to be a two-map game. And we do, in fact, have... I am uh, not able to show you all the maps right now, but this is uh, would be an absolutely typical um, gamers-style map for the OCS series. Right in the dead center here, we have Budapest. We also have this little... Budapest inset map to reduce counter clutter, which is probably a great idea, thinking about it. Uh, the second map is right here. Not a super colorful map, um, I don't think. Um, this is one that I've been fairly, I don't want to say super deep, but I've been reasonably involved in the playtest for the third winter. Um, I have not played this yet. None of the guys in my group have played this yet, so it is very likely that Hungarian Rhapsody is going to be our next OCS game. Um, all right, so we have a Hungarian Rhapsody game-specific rules, which is typical thick gamers-style paper, 28 pages. Um, there is color in here, even though there's a bunch of black and white pictures in the back. Um, there is some color, so this technically qualifies as a full-color rule book. Um, these weird units with the white frames around the borders are white frame units and they can't move south of the white line that's on the you may have noticed it's on one of the maps so game specific rules we have access tables in order of arrival which you see uh, is also in partial color at least and a very nice TEC actually uh, we also have Soviet tables in order of arrival along with weather tables and a TEC. So that's actually kind of cool. These actually then serve as player aids. Uh, we've got the standard 4.3 charts and tables here. These are on a lot of quite light 11 by 17 paper. Um, not a bad idea to cut these up and laminate them, in my experience, since they will get uh, pawed over quite a bit. Uh, we have these player aids. Now these are on what I would call quite light cardstock, which contain unit marker ID 
info boxes here. Goulash markers, those are probably like the sausages and tree bark soup and stuff like that. Um, access dead piles, white frame units, white frame units, no white frame units. Um, here is an, another access player display with reinforcement tracks and breakdown regiments. That's interesting. That's something I haven't seen before. Uh, similarly with the Soviets, uh, reinforcements, units and markers, general records tracks, special wagon extenders. That'll be interesting. Uh, then we have are we, all, all these, uh, these are all single-sided as you'd expect. Um, then we have Soviet player aid two, which is more dead pile, white, white frame, no white frame. But then we have this RBGK box. That's a special type of headquarters that can be used um, in the third winter as well, uh, from which units can kind of be stored and then released. I uh, don't know if it works the same way in Hungarian Rhapsody, but um, that's actually pretty cool that they give you that display. Uh, we also have two standalone TECs. We're always pawned for these things for some reason. Then we have this Axis core marker display and a Soviet core marker display. Um, this might be might be maybe not the only it, this is unusual for an OCS game to have this kind of thing um, everybody uses the core markers that I've played with um, but they just have to have them piled off the map somewhere uh, because it's always been a thing where you can't include core markers in OCS games uh, and then we have two maps let's get these back in the box we have a separate from the game specific rules scenario book, which is quite thick, 52 pages of scenario book. And there are 15 scenarios. Uh, the series in general has very strong scenario selection, and the scenarios tend to be good um, from beginning to end. Now, some, some of them won't necessarily show you the whole game, and that's fine. Um, <clears throat> and then we have the OCS series rules. So... If very briefly, we see if something something goes awry here. I don't really see a problem with with this one. And like I said, I don't care too much. Uh, it's not like I'm short on copies of the OCS rules. Ha ha. All right. And lastly, we have counters. So we have OCS version 4.2 counters are basically identical to the new ones. Um, that's another one. Hold on. There should be a second one. Yeah. So there's a second one of those. Uh, they just haven't done a 4.3 counter uh, marker sheet yet because they print them in quantities. So there's some interesting stuff going on here. You got some more hit markers, which frankly I didn't need. Um, and we have to remove Mr. Cat. Come on, Mr. Cat. There you go, Simon. All right. Um, so we got the goulash markers. We've got these Soviet reinforcement markers by month. Uh, we've got, of course, some Soviet air including some with yellow boxes around them. I'm not sure what that means, but it would be, it sounds like something relatively typical of um, OCS. Of course, we have our reserve markers. Simon here is being really, uh, really assertive at this exact moment here. Sit on, my, sit on Papa's chair. All right, and then we got unit sheets. Uh, again, these look quite standard for OCS. We've got some formations down here. These would be your Germans. Here's your SS. These would be your Soviets. The orange would be your guards. These red guys, which is kind of a crimson in this case, are NKVD. Uh, the green guys are going to be Romanians. Uh, these are Slovaks. And I'm not sure what these guys are here. Not sure at all. And then, of course, we got some guards air. Uh, we got some more units here, with what looks like um, Hungarians, more SS, some German air. This is 40, uh, late, I think late 44, very end of 44. Let's take a quick glance at the scenario book. Uh, October 44 pretty much to February 1945 looks like the whole campaign runs so it's quite late war um, am I missing something cuz wow okay so I want to draw your attention to something here 
Soviet Air, Soviet Air, a couple more Soviet Air, Soviet Air, German Air. That's what you get for a late war game. Very interested to dig into this thing. Um, I think I think some of the late-ish war um, OCS titles are some of the strongest. I, I personally am, am a little less interested in something like Case Blue, although Smolensk and Guderian's Blue Creek 2 are really good. Um, but uh, I think the, the really strong ones are the things like Baltic Gap, which is quite late war, late war, where there's a lot of parity between the two sides, and both sides have a lot of operational options. So, um, very glad to finally get my hands on Hungarian Rhapsody. Um, brand new, just walked itself in the door today from um, the Gamers and Multiman Publishing. Can't wait to uh, get this to the table. But fortunately, that will be happening uh, before too much longer here. So, um, we, I'm, there may be some video on it um, if that happens. I, I typically don't do video of the local OCS games, but I might in this case because it's brand new and we're kind of hitting it at all at the same time amongst all the players. And uh, we've all been looking forward to it a lot. So thanks for watching. Uh, please leave me a um, thumbs up if you've enjoyed watching the video. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave me any comments or questions below. And if you are inclined or looking for a way to support the channel, please check out the Patreon, which is linked in the video description. Thanks again. Happy gaming.